to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in! Oh, oh Jay, it's Christmas time! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody! Spread your Christmas cheer around the land. Get, you them, bo- get you, them trees up. You both know it doesn't feel like Christmas right now. You both know it. You're but we not- both know we want it to. Oh, so everybody wants it to. So get. let's do this. Let's make it happen. Hey, Brooks, does it feel like Christmas right now? No. No, it doesn't. Hey, Brooks, do you like when it feels like Christmas? Yeah. Exactly. You let's do this, baby. You can't always manufacture. Th- you can't manufacture magic. But we can try. Yeah, and well, we Mike's will. Mike's wearing a pair of uh, sick kicks today. Yes, that honestly, they kind of they got me a little bit towards the Christmas mood. Yeah, I got the kicks on uh, yesterday morning before all the games before uh, <laughs> before that Sunday occurred. Uh, I sat down, had the Christmas jams. Did little, you really? You're darn right, we did. I, it's Christmas time, baby. I was. I up did not at- expect <laughs> it's Christmas time to start the show today. <laughs> I, I was. At- I'll tell you, it doesn't feel like Christmas. Based on how fantasy oh, went this, this weekend, this weekend was not good. Uh, this, this was, you know, this was one of those. Well, there's <laughs> always, and uh, you know, I, you might be new to fantasy, or you might just be, you know, we all forget the the big picture. There are always probably about two of these weeks mm-hmm. every year where up is down and down is up, and everything goes wrong. And and Fookland, we are with you on that. Like our heart breaks. I I benched. Josh Allen, like a genius. I mean, I was so happy. It was a gr- after the morning. Oh, I was like, thank goodness. I, I I looked at that weather. I was like, it's, thank goodness. I you know didn't get stuck with those fourteen points. I got Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> this afternoon. Let's go, baby. And that, I'm I man, those fourteen points look so good right now. I mean, this hap- this happens. It oh. happens to us. I mean, you know, we uh, we have to roll with the same punches. I don't know if I've been more tilted than yesterday. Because it, it, you know, Brooklyn, I can confirm this. I mean, it. My, I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sure it wasn't very fun to oh, watch, were, watch the games with me. No, you, you were fine. Just my man was over in a in a heap in a, in a slump I was of in shame. A, on I was the in couch. a Tevin Coleman heap because pro, look, it's the process over results thing. The process I felt like was right. I invested big fab, so it was personal, right? It's personal because I'm playing Tevin Coleman everywhere, and he comes out and he's got three carries, twenty yards, looks great. He's going to be the guy. He was the guy. Hasty fumbles. Hasty mix up, misses blitz pickups. Tevin Coleman set up for success. I prescribe him to all of our listenership, and he's We're, hurt. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't see the injury. I just was like, all right, Tevin Same Coleman's knee. the guy at the beginning of the game. And then it was like, oh, wait, where's why isn't Tevin Coleman? Out it, the, it hurts bad. And then he's just gone, and then he's injured, and there's nothing we can do with injuries. No, and it hurts so bad because so many people that morning – It's like, do you really believe in Tevin Coleman? And I I put it into practice in my rosters. I told you what I believed. And then to have an injury disrupt it that way just feels unfair. Doesn't feel like Christmas, Mike. But You uh, should put on some Christmas music. It will help. (laughs) It really will. will. I I was going to say, I was was awake (laughs) at midnight on Halloween. And mm-hmm. when that clock went to 12.01, I had an alarm set, Very and nice. I put that Christmas music on, and it was glorious. Did you really? 100%. <laughs> that is just unbelievable. <laughs> I think I figured November 15th, I'm willing to go ahead of Thanksgiving. Okay. Right. Okay. I, but I, what, last what year, are we getting there? Last year, I, try, I, warmer? I tried to do what you guys said last year. I put up some stuff, and I got ready on November 1st. It just wasn't right. Look, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. You're right. You're right. I'll say that. Big well, strong hearts like let's me and Jason. <laughs> big strong Christmas hearts. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and revel in this weekend. <laughs> We've got some. <laughs> this is Monday Punday. Monday Punday. Uh, D Slay Metcalf. Oh yes, Clyde Edwards. Where the hell were you, <laughs> oh, Clyde no. Edwards? Despair. Clyde Edwards timeshare. <laughs> oh, in a classic Foot Clan. D. Yay! Dallas. Yes. Jared Goof. Mm. Jimmy Godolfalo. Oh, oh. Kenny oh. Holiday. Oh, man. <laughs> mm. Johnu Whiff. Oh, I like this one. Scory Davis. 
Uh, and, uh, Corey Yavis. I get all the yay ones, yes. apparently. Jason, this one's for you. Zach Boss. How does that feel, Jason? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Jonathan <laughs> Failure. Oh. Oh, that, oh, that one's for you. Oh. Tyreek Skill? Okay, we're running out. <laughs> we're running out for Tyreek. And, uh, Robert Goods. <laughs> Robert Goods? Robert. Like he's got the goods? Yeah. <laughs> what is what is that the fir one? The first thing I thought when I heard the D Slay Metcalf was, like, we're out. Like, we're, we've are we gone through every – he's blown up so many times this year that uh, this is all we have left for these superstars. Man, is he good. He's great. He, he's super good great. He is super good great. Uh, fantastic adjectives and – uh, no, he he's he's phenomenal, and I I really do believe that 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 pass rundown on the interception the week prior really taxed him, and I think that was part of why he had a bad game. I I feel I like I don't agree with you. At his all. consistency because <laughs> he scored a game winning touchdown in that same game that just got called back on a hold. He's just a, he's just great all the time. That's what I'm saying is I I feel like his consistency is is as high as any other player in the league. He is maybe, I mean. Put, let's go Dynasty mm -hmm. right now. Dynasty mm -hmm. draft startup. DK Metcalf with Russell Wilson right now for the uh, foreseeable future and beyond. Number one pick? I would not personally take him ahead of um, probably three guys, but he's in that conversation if you want to. Sure. I mean, you know, for a while, Juju Smith-Schuster seemed like he was – you know, just a big, dominant young guy with a good quarterback, and he hopped into the one on one. So I, you know, when it comes to uh, you look at DeAndre Hopkins tied to Kyler, you look at uh, Devontae Ty Adams, Devontae Adams, and you look at Tyreek Hill tied to Patrick Mahomes. Sure. But it's, DK is in the conversation I, with I those think three. It's DK. I, I right, maybe it's the uh, this year bias, but I think it's DK Metcalf based mm -hmm. on his physical stature. Unlike Juju, he is doing this as the leader of the team. You know what I mean? It was Juju's was peripheral with I Antonio Brown. I don't know. I'm just so impressed with him. Yeah, he's it's unbelievable. What can't he do? And not Hopkins still has time. Like yeah. he, he still has a few years to be elite, but he's 28. <laughs> and, our, and our dude DK Metcalf is 22. He's 22? Yeah. He's a, he's a, a wee little baby. He's still got a pacifier. Oh, he's still got to get grown into his man body. He's still oh, that maturing. Would be scary. <laughs> that would he be... grew six more inches. <laughs> then you get your uh, seven foot tight end situation. Oh, he would not. No, make... I mean, he, what's great about Metcalf is you have, you know, he's a goal line threat. He's a big play threat. He's a run after the catch threat. He's got a great quarterback. It's just, I'm so mm -hmm. impressed. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers, if you want to follow the show over there. The rankings, the start sit tool, the player profiles, which continually are being upgraded. The fantasyfootballers.com is a website in the community with the bonus weekly episode and a, and a whole bunch of premium perks over at jointhefoot.com. Now we have uh, we have an update, right? We have the Megla Bowl, and if you're new to the mm. show, the Megla Bowl is the world's largest fantasy football tournament. We uh, open that up to all of our supporters at jointhefoot.com back in August and September, early September before the season begins. It's the most hardcore league that exists, and uh, if you're eight thousand plus, members. there are uh, you know there's a good chance that you're listening and you're in this thing and you want to know what's how does this work? We're getting up to the time where you need to be in the know. Here is how the Megala Bowl is going to function. Week eleven starts playoffs okay so that that's that's early you got to be prepared and here's the thing in this type of a league rosters are locked at the end of week 10 what you finish your you better make all the transactions and looking forward through the playoffs and depth for injuries there will be no waivers no trades once the playoff week starts in week 11 the trade deadline is going to be week nine so you have up until the end of monday night football and then that's done. And then week 10 for waivers, and then that's done, and you are locked the rest of the way. Um, the, then, basically, if you want to know how do I get in the playoffs, the top three teams in every single league are in the playoffs. And then it's total points, top 50%. So get your last each and every week, in. Just each to be and, clear. Yes, each and every week. The top 50% will move on until a champion 
is crowned and a Listener League spot is acquired. And Megalobowl.com has all that information yes, as Megal well. Thank you, Mike. All right, let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right, we did have our slew of injuries once again. Kenny Galladay exited mm. early with a hip injury. Kittle exited with a foot injury. We know that there is no fracture on initial x-rays, but this is becoming uh, – we're dealing with this quite a bit with George Kittle now. Tevin Coleman, knee injury. Jimmy Garoppolo exited early with an ankle injury. And he looked – he did not look healthy uh, at all. I mean, you want to talk about process. Uh, you had a – of uh, I liked Jimmy Garoppolo because he was playing against Seattle. And then a backup comes in and starts scoring points. Like a healthy Jimmy Garoppolo, I believe, would have got it done. But he was – are you, Clearly not. You're Nick, talking about Nick Mullins? I am. Uh, quarterback one? Yes. On the week? I yeah. was going to say. Who played one quarter of football against this team? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. What's funny is you didn't know if it was going to be Mullins or Beathard based on right. weeks past, uh, you know, in terms of shooting your shot there. But Garoppolo is just not right. No. And, uh, you know, he needs to be 100% physically to be the 75% quarterback that he is. That's true. Uh, Daryl Henderson exited with a thigh injury. Uh, you saw Cam Akers get more work. Cam Akers was all right in this game. So something to monitor. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, we have good news for everybody. Yeah, it is good news. <laughs> it is it really. Is great. It is. <laughs> it's great news. The psyche, the collective psyche of fantasy football players was disrupted by what happened in Indianapolis. Jordan Wilkins had 20 carries. Naeem Hines saw a bunch of snaps. Jonathan Taylor all of a sudden disappeared to start the second half, and you wondered demotion. You wondered doghouse. Uh, you did not wonder injury at the time. Mm -mm. But fortunately, a Foot Clan uh, person on Twitter sent me a post-game interview with Philip Rivers and in a he, a throwaway line he just said hey yeah we love what Jordan Wilkins and Naeem Hines did with JT being nicked up so there is an injury of some sort that prohibited him from being more involved now he wasn't a world beater as it was so this is concerning but it's also welcoming news in terms of like what happened. If you watched the game, you were you were unbelievably tilted mm -hmm. if you had Jonathan Taylor because you're watching exactly what you wanted to see happen from this Colts def uh, offense in this matchup. I mean, Wilkins scored a bunch, uh, Hines scored a bunch, and then Jonathan Taylor was f seemingly nowhere to be found, used very sparsely. We did get some news that Gardner Minshew is going to be inactive in week nine against the Texans. We don't know if it'll be Jake Luton, Luton mm -hmm. or Mike Glennon, but it shouldn't be Mike Glennon. That is probably... <laughs> you got me on that one. I mean, that was a legit... I was not <laughs> expecting that laugh. If they but... need my input, that is my input. Uh. Um, K Cliff Kingsbury said that the Cardinals have had two positive COVID-19 tests. Uh, during the bye week, he doesn't expect them to affect the upcoming week, but you never know. And the NFL trade deadline is tomorrow. Cliff Kingsbury also had a comment on Kenyon Drake. He's not likely to play this week, but they are marking him as day-to-day -day right now. Uh, he said it looked more severe than probably what it's going to end up being. That's good for Kenyon. And uh, he's made really good progress. So you may only have a week, maybe two, of Chase Edmonds having the Lions share. But you always have re-injury risks, so he is somebody you have to roster and be ready to play. And trade deadline, uh, let's just let's just have a moment. Will Fuller, because the the hottest rumor mill, Will Fuller ends up on the Green Bay Packers. What's you? How how does that make you feel inside? I think Aaron Rodgers is good. Oh, it's phenomenal for Aaron Rodgers. It's probably a little bit bad for Devonte Adams, who's just getting every single target right now. Um. I think Andy and I disagree on this based on talking about this in the studio. And the more I've thought about it, the more I think Will Fuller would be great there. Like for fantasy, I think he would still be great. It's not necessarily an upgrade, but I don't, I wouldn't view it as the downgrade that I, I thought at first. And obviously this is hypothetical, but Aaron Rodgers has in the past easily supported two, even three, three yeah. uh, top fantasy options in a single season. And if you w just watch the sheer amount of opportunities that 
wide receiver X, not the position, but like variable, gets down the field from Aaron Rodgers this season and they can't catch the ball. I to think me, it's a huge great. downgrade. I, I Yeah, and you're right. We disagree. I, I think it's a monstrous downgrade. Uh, Rodgers spreads it around. You've got Tunyon. You've got Lazard coming back. You've got MVS. You've got a guy coming into a brand new system. You're going to see limited snaps. He's the number one in Houston right now. So I don't. I would be trying to get out of Will Fuller as exciting as it would be on the surface. So um, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember a midseason wide receiver acquisition, you know, working out for fantasy. Emmanuel Sanders worked out until he got hurt when he eh. when he moved over to yeah. he, he had San a couple Francisco. games. He had a couple games. Yeah. Yeah. But he came in as the one <laughs> on the team and Fair. had a couple games. Uh any other updates? Uh I, if you want to root for something, mm -hmm. Jason, just turn off Jason's mic for a second. If you want to root for something tonight, Jason and I are facing each other in a dynasty league, and I need a miracle. I need Leonard Fournette to score f fewer than uh five point five. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go with it. Whatever. 5.5 5. 5. 5 fantasy points, and uh, Jason Jason goes down. So we, we know what the that. people will be rooting for. It's the first time they'll be rooting for Leonard Fournette in their lives. 5.5. <laughs> 5. 5. You know, six receptions last week pretty much eliminates my possibility of beating you. He's the nickel. Bat. Yeah, the nickel. He's the nickel. He, he is. If like, he just scored a nickel, I'd be fine. I would win. Oh, that's, that's true. It's going to say he is very similar to Nickelback. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't Look care for either stat. one. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other news, Brooksy? How are you doing? How were your teams this weekend? Hey, it, it was a good week for me. It was? Yeah. A, a big win. I really needed it. Any catastrophic injuries giving us hope in our dynasty league against you? Uh, it's a downward spiral in that league for you me. Do have, oh, you do have on. Zeke, right? Yes. Your Thought, team. Thoughts on Ezekiel Elliott? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who's projected to beat you this week in dynasty, Brooks? Uh, Al Borland. Oh, man, the oh, trash wow. talk is flowing. Oof. Week eight, it, it got the juices flowing, apparently. After 5-0, uh, and oh, about to be three losses in a row, last three. So. What a loser. Let's keep him out of the playoffs, please. You're in my division, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> that, that yes, sir had so much behind it. All right, we want to talk studs and duds first. We want to thank today's sponsor, and uh, that is WGU. And this is where you go for a flexible degree program. You need, uh, this is 2020, guys. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. You need flexibility, and you need a university that works with your schedule so that you can accomplish everything else you're doing in your life. And that's what WGU offers. They have a degree program that is affordable and flexible. You can earn a respected bachelor's or master's degree uh, for under $8,700 per year. And that is with fees included. Uh, there's no set login times, right? So you can access your coursework 24-7 anytime you want to uh, to work towards that degree. They have a low flat rate tuition. So this is something you should look into if you're looking to pick up your degree. Uh, you can pass most courses as quickly as you master them, which is a nice way um, to accomplish your goals there. You get your $65 application fee waived by going to wgu.com edu slash fantasy footballers that's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers for your 65 dollar application fee waived this week's fantasy stud muffins was there good in this week i don't remember any good there was some good and it thankfully it starts with the great and that is the great patrick mahomes I mean, you know, if you if you drafted Mahomes, if you traded for Mahomes, you are thrilled because you got what you hoped for, which is infinity points. I in our league of record, I climbed upon his back like Tyreek Hill did, and he carried me to victory despite Kenny Galladay, despite Tevin Coleman, thirty one for forty two for four sixteen and five. He has a twenty to one inter uh, touchdown Holy to interception crap. ratio on the season. And he gets Carolina next week before his bye. I will say this, uh, Mr. Mahomes, Mr. Reed, I believe you were up 19, 20 points with 10 minutes left in the game and then threw a uh, was another 40-yard touchdown or so to Tyreek Hill. Can we just give the ball to Clyde? A little, just a little bit. You were, you were, uh, the game was over. Let's just. Let's well, they needed to cover. 
Yes, and they did. Uh, it was a 20-point line that was like, yeah, no problem. Um, I believe the last drive or two, several, I don't remember, but it they didn't even have Mahomes in there. I mean, they were just like, yeah, we're done. I, I want to believe that the other coaches, all of them, they just have a pact, and it's to rub uh, number two's face in the dirt at the end of these games. Rub number two and a number two. Well, look, it, number two. It was embarrassing. It was just un embarrassing for yes. the Jets to go every single play is the same. I feel like I'm in a Twilight Zone episode. You're down 19 points, 25 points. Let's go first down handoff it's, to Franklin Gore. It's truly kill insane. me. <laughs> there are only 32 32 human beings in the world that get to be a head coach of a mm -hmm. national football team. They have to be bright football minds. Um, and somehow Adam Gase is still employed as the head coach of the New York Jets. The all, I mean, I, I, look, if I was going for the number one pick and that's what the Jets are doing, I would hire Adam Gase. So I guess he is good at his job right now if his job is to lose. Yeah. But it, it's it's really – it's almost disrespectful to football. <laughs> as a whole. Yeah, to, to the NFL. Like, Adam Gase being employed is, is – Shameful. Russell Wilson. Unlimited. 27 for 37 <laughs> for 261 and four. Uh, I'm really glad we have that drop, yes. Al. Thank you. Unlimited. Because I will use it that many times. Yeah. Um, Russell Wilson was outstanding. He has some decent wideouts to throw the ball to, and he is he's good. And their defense, uh, you know. DK Metcalf wants everybody to praise their defense, but Jimmy Garoppolo was not very good, and uh, their defense is why Russ can keep cooking. Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers had a nice game, three touchdowns, all of them to Devontae Adams, and has San Francisco next week, though, so you might want to cool your jets a little bit with Aaron Rodgers. Matthew Stafford. Hey! Three, hey! 336 and three. All he needed was Kenny Galladay to get knocked out, apparently. And this is his first three touchdown game of 2020. So are we encouraged? We got Minnesota next week. We are encouraged. We needed to see signs of life. Uh, we'll have to hit the laboratory. I'm not sure if he will be uh, the streamer I want to go with yeah. in, heading into week nine. But you can at least have confidence of, of maybe, maybe Stafford got some of his mojo back. I don't know. Speaking of mojo, two straight. Weeks of more than 30 fantasy points for Phillip Rivers. Yeah. 23 for 33. Three more touchdowns. Baltimore next week. Sit him down. <laughs> sit uh, him yeah. down. Mm, yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. Don't sit. Sitting him down implies that you're sitting him on your bench. <laughs> Please don't. don't do that. No, just let him uh, live on the wire. Mike? Yes. Uh, Justin Herbert, hands very strong, does not drop shoes. He still catches them. That's I think a, this was in reference to your the shoe is going to drop mm -hmm. comment of Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. right. which I believe, you know, I was in a complete yes, you were, No, it was it was directed towards both of you. Well, Justin Herbert is... Well, I, I don't, neither of us said it would definitively happen this week. Yeah, I said it wouldn't happen this week. We said that it would it would happen it would over the course happen, of the year. But think, not this week. I think we could check the tape. We should. So, <laughs> so let me ask you a question, Mike. Is, Every uh, week is Justin Herbert a 50-touchdown quarterback Maybe. here on out? I don't know, I'm not going to call him for a 50 touchdown quarterback, but he is an every week starter. Vegas. I don't disagree that he's he's been unbelievable. We both love Justin Herbert. Yes, I'm saying he's an every week start as a top ten. He he has a top ten play uh, every single week. Las Vegas, Miami, which yeah, that's looks the one. it looks it does look a little bit tougher, but so did Tampa Bay, so did the New Orleans Saints, so did the Denver Broncos. Like, stop doubting Justin Herbert. He's great. He's surrounded and he is surrounded. By greatness. Well, I, look, this is uh, a perfect storm for Justin Herbert as well. It, it, it has a lot to do with the fact that they do not have a running game. They just don't. Joshua Kelly's terrible. They brought Trumaine Pope in to try to enliven the backfield, which he is did. not something that he did a little bit. you expected. And uh, this is Herbert's team. He had a couple of interceptions in this game. They didn't care. They let him keep throwing the football. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Drew Locke. And then, oh, <laughs> what? I don't know, man. This, this was wild. This was – look, he had a good fantasy week. He finished as a top option, but he wasn't good. Did anybody watch that game and think, man, Drew Locke looks really good? Because sure. I didn't. Yeah, I mean, he he did over the back half of the game. I mean, he, he made uh, great 
throws time and time again across the middle to uh, Hamilton, to Judy. He led a game-winning drive. I'm going to give him his due this week. Um, yeah. Three touchdowns, 250, won the game. He's got Atlanta next week. Is he uh, Is he in consideration for you? Nope. Dude, that's my point. I think you got to at least think about it. No, I thought your point was that he didn't look good. Uh, <laughs> my point is he did. Yes. My point is he was not. If he really looked good to you and you thought, man, this guy's playing well. I believe in him. He's got Atlanta coming up. He would be in consideration. He didn't actually look great through the course of that game. At the end of the game, he definitely came back and won the game. Congratulations, Drew Locke. But he did not win me over as saying he looks great because the first half of that game, he he looked pretty terrible. Okay. Yeah, I I wasn't prescribing you start Drew Locke. I just thought he played really well. I, I liked uh, what I saw. Uh, Dalvin Cook is decent. <sighs> Oof, man. Oh, man. We've, oh, brother. We've said it so many times. Like, there are only a handful of players in the National Football League at running back that are definitively great on a carry-by-carry -carry basis. The the Grand Canyon size gap between Alexander Madison and Dalvin Cook was on display yet again. 30 for 163 and three, and threw in two for 63 and a touchdown through the air. Four touchdowns. I mean, it's Cook. It's Kamara. Derrick Henry. It's Derrick Henry. Probably Nick Chubb in my mind. Yeah, been a while since we've seen him. And then Christian McCaffrey, who's, you know, sure. we haven't seen him in a while. But, I mean, just unbelievable performance. Detroit next week. That's that's going to be a, a bloodbath. He scored a touchdown on his team's first four drives, which he's the first NFL player wow. to ever do that because that is insane. Wow. But playing against Andy in our dynasty league where you had Dalvin Cook, I just kept thinking he's going to end with 12 touchdowns in this game. How, they could not yeah, stop Dalvin Cook. Green Bay's run defense is very bad. Well, Dal Dalvin, Cook is, Dalvin great, Cook is really good. But Green Bay's defense uh, against run. Detroit, terrible. Chicago, Dallas the next three weeks. He'll play right. Dalvin Cook. Yep. Gio Bernard, 15 for 62 and a touchdown. Uh, has the bye week coming up. Mixon should be back after the bye. We appreciate your service, Mr. Thank Bernard. You. Alvin Kamara, like, I mean, nine for 96 through the air again. He is outstanding. I don't understand what defenses do. I don't understand how he can flare out to the right of Drew Brees or to the left of Drew Brees with so much space every play. Um, but he would be the wide receiver 12 right now if he was only declared a wide receiver. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the defenses have to focus in on that wide receiver core. So it gives uh, Deontay Harris, right? Um, Deontay Austin Harris. Carr. Yeah. Why are you not like absolutely putting someone specific? Like you know how when you get a mobile quarterback and you've got that spy that just follows him wherever he goes. They're too slow. Bring in an extra corner and just <laughs> you. He needs a corner on him. He really does. These 100%. linebackers have no oppor no chance. So unbelievable performance. And then uh, DJ Dallas, DJ yeah. Dallas scored twice. That was the highlight there. He think it was about two a carry on 18 carries, but he scored two times. And uh, it's probably his moment in the sun is over as well. Probably. But Zach Moss scored twice. Yeah. Okay. Where where are we at on Zach Moss? Temperature check. I know Devin Singletary actually had a pretty solid game as well. Uh, not fantasy wise, but just overall, you know, rushing statistics. Both had 14 carries. Both had 80 plus yards. But Zach Moss gets the high value uh, carries. He, I'd rather he play is, Zach Moss. He is the one who in the red zone. But I'm saying we've been pretty hands off on Buffalo running backs. Is Zach Moss approaching a place where you're willing to play him, or was that the product of a bad Josh Allen game? Well, it was it was obviously a super weathery game, as we have mm -hmm. now coined it. And by we, I mean me. I was going to say, um, please take credit b and, by yourself. And so, uh, you know, this was, they they both teams ran the ball a ton. It was more difficult to throw. He, he's interesting, and you got to pay attention. He, Mike's one hundred percent right. He gets the more valuable touches. He gets a little bit more work in the passing game, and the goal line is where he comes into the game. So I'll I'll. I'll Look his way, I would roster him, but I'm not yet to the point where I'm going to start him. I mean, it's it's pretty simple on this team. If Zach Moss scores a touchdown, you're going to be happy. If Devin Singletary catches a few passes, you'll be happy. But, uh, you know, Josh Allen runs runs them in as well. Mm -hmm.
but I'm with you. Moss is a, a prefer, uh, preferred option. All right, I want to know what you guys think here. Jordan Wilkins ended up with 20 carries, 89 and a touchdown. Naeem Hines, just five carries, but had five targets, ended up with two touchdowns, reminiscent of week one. Uh, Naeem Hines has been entirely useless for fantasy rosters since week one. And uh, this was another touchdown dependent situation. What are you doing with the, uh, you know, with Jonathan Taylor? You got Baltimore next week. I mean, uh, <laughs> how do you even prescribe like picking up? We don't know how severe the injury is, and then you have Wilkins and Hines against Baltimore. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to start a, a a Colt running back next week because I'm not sure which one it would be or should be in a tough matchup. So, so how do you how do you? Uh, I think you approach waivers then, because that's the question for these two players is people are going to want to run to the waiver wire thinking Wilkins is the guy to have maybe rest of season. I feel like you're chasing points if you if you do that, and and you'll be disappointed next week having spent up to get a Wilkins uh, and then having to play him against Baltimore. I'm probably just going to be advising not to go hard at any of these guys they're they're running backs who are getting carries so they'll certainly be in my priority list but they'll be low down and free you know because I I can't imagine a world where I would have confidence to put these guys into my lineup against Baltimore all right Wide receiver stars this week. Metcalf, 15 targets, 12 for 161 and 2. <laughs> Devontae Adams, 12 targets, 7 for 53 and 3. Robert Woods was great. Uh, had two touchdowns, which was uh, big time for Robert Woods. Tyreek Hill has been so consistent. Well, <laughs> he, he didn't perform like Robert Woods, but Cooper Cup, 21 targets. 11 for 110, though, which was nice. It it was both were good. Maybe the worst the Rams offense has looked in forever at, at the same time that Woods and Cup were the best they've been. That's what happens when you turn the ball over four times. This is the Jameis Winston uh, fantasy success model. When you get <laughs> down so much that you're yeah. like, I got to just keep throwing the ball and I'm going to rack up so many yards and touchdowns and all that jazz. But it, it came because of how terrible, like the reason these two guys were great is because of how bad Jared Goff was. And that is true and makes no sense. 21 gonna, targets is almost embarrassing when your quarterback threw it 61 times. He should have had more. Right. The, uh, yeah, if you didn't see the game, the, the Miami Dolphins defense just manhandled the the Rams. But I'm now picturing Jameis Winston doing an infomercial, like talking to quarterbacks. Are your statistics just a little bit too low? Are you, try, are you trying to pad those stats? Well, let me tell you about this. Pick six. <laughs> The Jameis Winston method. The pick six <laughs> method. Very nice. You got TB12 and you got pick six. Because here's the reality is is when the defense scores, when they actually score the touchdown on a pick six, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, that means the offense stays yes, on the field. Exactly. It's best case scenario for fantasy. Yeah, don't just throw a pick. Oh, no. Throw a pick six. That doesn't pad your stats like a pick six. No. I learned that from that infomercial. All right, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's have an uncomfortable conversation. Oh, no. You oh, know, no. this is a tough. Uh, it's been a tough year, so let's have an uncomfortable conversation. I know where it's going. Corey Davis. Oh, no. Corey Davis. Um, have Both Corey Davis and A.J. Brown have played five games this year. This comes from Mike Taglier. They both have 39 targets. Corey Davis has two more receptions than A.J. Brown. He has more yards than A.J. Brown. He is uh, right behind A.J. Brown in fantasy points. He went eight for one twenty eight and one in this game. What say you? Corey Davis, if you look at his consistency, uh he, like you can use the snapshot tool on the fantasyfootballers.com. He has busted once out of five games. He has been he has so he's been usable in four out of five, and two out of five have been like good, good fantasy games. Yeah, C Corey Davis is is someone that can be started right now, but I I don't think that you're per, uh, personally I don't I don't confuse these two and say Corey Davis is the better fantasy option. You know you you had AJ Brown that week one get injured in that game, sure, and that was his only bust game. He's been since we've seen him the last four weeks. AJ Brown is you know up at the top, and uh, if you want a big play potential, it's far more likely to come from AJ Brown than from Corey Davis, but I think both are startable assets. Chicago, the Colts, the Ravens, the Colts. 
Well, those are the next four games yeah. for Mr. Corey Davis. And I don't I don't want to and talk winter, about Corey Davis because that's not coming. a fun thing to do. Yeah. But I do want to remind people, this was the fifth overall pick in the National Football League draft. Devontae Parker had a year five breakout. This is year four for Corey Davis. So to quote my good friend Jason Moore, he was drafted to be great. <laughs> Yes, he was. he was. Curtis Samuel, uh, he had the great Thursday night game. Uh, you know, it was really two plays. It's fun. But it's fun. How about McCole Hardman? Um, is this just to to taunt us? Because you got nine targets, you had seven catch. This is a stat line that looks like a normal wide receiver. Seven for 96 and a touchdown. This is the first time, I think, in his career, he's had a stat line that resembles a traditional wide receiver. He took it to 100. Just one week too late. <laughs> Was one week too late. This wasn't one touch man. This was seven touch man. Yeah. This was nine target man. It was involvement. I might play him next week. It was involvement in the offense that we've been waiting. You know, I, I thought this was going to happen when Sammy Watkins went down. Snap percentage up. Routes run up. And uh, it's nice to see, and hopefully it can become a trend. Brandon Ayuk. Oh, Ayuk. Oh, he garbage timed. Oh, my goodness. He was still having a nice game. But that last second it, touchdown. It was. It, the last second touchdown took him to a an incredible play on the week. He's he a did, top 10 wideout this week. Top it, five, maybe. He was also uh, dragged down like on the two-inch line as yep. well a, a, a couple drives before. Eight for 91 and a touchdown to give you that. Uh, and Mike's taking it up to 100 player. We got one. Which was a uh, success. Marvin Jones ended up with two touchdowns in the uh, – he only had three catches for 39 yards. Oh, Marvin. Kenny Galladay got knocked out. Oh. And at the same time, you kind of have to glance his way because Minnesota next week, and if Galladay was to miss, you can feel pain again. Yeah. Yeah, it's I one mean, of those – you can throw him in your lineup, you know, and, and uh, say a prayer and hope that he gets seven targets so he can catch – Three. One touchdown and three balls. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Travis Kelsey is probably the most satisfying fantasy player to have on my roster that I can ever remember. Every week, Travis Kelsey is so incredibly consistent. And this was one of those years I remember Mike talking in draft season where mm -hmm. it was like you were willing to finally pay up for a tight end just based on history, right? I mean, number one tight end for four straight years, make it – it's going to be five – at this point, mm -hmm. and eight for 109 and one, and he's just, I mean, he got a bowling ball thrown his way for a touchdown in this game, an underhanded inside screen pass. There, There is a gigantic pie. I mean, like People always go to the analogy of the pie for fantasy points and where do people slot in, but it's a big pie, and Travis Kelsey is always at the front of the line, and he does that, uh, the cartoon move, you know, where you, you slice a piece of the cake, and you lift the rest of it up, mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah, have fun, turds. <laughs> I left you a little bit. It, it's it, it's the best kind of fantasy because you watch George Kittle, and he's making these unbelievably hard contested catches coming up getting injured, just unbelievable plays right. to get his fantasy points. You watch Travis Kelsey, and you want to know what he's doing to get his fantasy points? He's running in the middle just of the field. Strolling through the park. Turning Stro around. Turning around, getting hit right in the chest with a ball. Get, Do you think in tackled. his workouts he's not even running routes? He's just practicing the turnaround. Yeah, he just he's, he's just in front of in a front mirror, of a like mirror, hey, just, whoo, yeah, let me see those hands. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's crazy. He doesn't look like he's doing anything special other than being gigantic, first in line at the at the at Where, the target. Where's, show. where's nobody at? Where's nobody? <laughs> right. Oh, nobody's right there. Let me turn around. It's so nice to have Andy Reid as as your head coach, where it's like the it it feels like he takes the defense and says, "You guys." Nobody is allowed to be within 15 yards of another defender. You got to spread out across the whole field and yeah. give us room to work. Uh, I do want to circle back to a wide receiver, by the way. Jared Cook had a nice game. Eric Ebron had a nice game. Um, but I, we didn't mention him. But I, I feel like he deserves to be mentioned because since week four, he is the receiving yards leader in all of football Ooh. and also scored and had a nice game. And that would be Travis Fulgham. Yes. Travis Fulgham had 400. And he has ha he has 435 receiving yards since week four when he basically started playing for that team. And this was with Jalen Rager there, Dallas, and Goddard, Dallas Goddard there. He so. almost had two touchdowns, much like Ayuk. He got dragged down on the two, and then Rager ended up with a touchdown. Yeah, that's Fulgham is a he's a weekly play at this point. Uh, you don't watch the game. 
my, my, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, whatever you do. Holy Toledo, that game. <laughs> that was a that was rough. That was a rough watch. What I have learned, you know, which is very little, clearly, a glutton for punishment in fantasy. But what mm-hmm. I've learned over the last few years is that when you prescribe greatness for Philadelphia, when you prescribe optimism, when you prescribe any here's new weapons for you, Carson. When the line is fine, the, the backfield's fine, the wide receivers, oh, they're all back. You don't end up with what you think should happen ever. Can you remember a time when you're like, man, he's got his full assortment and we got the, the big time game? I can't remember when he's had his full assortment. So, no, but I totally understand your point because the, the Eagles, when you have optimism, they let you down. But here's the reality is the NFC East has not let us down. We disparage them. Mm-hmm. We mock them. We are disrespectful. And sometimes that puts a chip on your shoulder where it's like, we're going to show them. And they're like, oh, we're going to show them. <laughs> they're 100% right. That is the trashiest football that exists right now. The the entire conference, every every team is still under 500, and they all have a negative point differential. <laughs> I, I've i never, like, uh, I know that it takes an incredible athlete to be a quarterback in the National Football sure. League, but I am fairly certain that that was as close to my stat line and performance that uh, I've ever seen with Ben DiNucci. Like, <laughs> when he was, he got sacked the way I would get sacked. I think I could, you know, it was like 20 for 39 or something like that. I could probably pull that off to if I'm throwing to Dalton Schultz for four yards. The sidearm pass to an already out of bounds Amari Cooper. <laughs> what it was just, oh, there was a chef's kiss, man. Was, uh, and I know, great. I know, I know. You did your best, buddy. <laughs> you did your best. And you'll be able to tell your kids you played, you started an you NFL did. game. You did. Congratulations. Probably shouldn't have finished it, but you started it. <laughs> Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Carson, All right. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz <laughs> was uh, not a good. Dude, Carson Wentz. I mean, it, this was not the offensive line's fault. How many plays was Carson Wentz just standing there for, I don't know, three seconds? Then he starts scrambling because the pressure is, is eventually trickling in. He's just looking and looking. And he ends up holding the ball for eight seconds or whatever and and then takes a sack. Like, what is what is happening in Philadelphia? Mike Mike was a little embittered. I mean, this is our job. We have to watch football, and he had to watch the game. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a pleasant experience for Mike. I've just the, – the Carson Wentz apologies, man. And it, then, But then I'm watching him playing when you, you were You're talking about the division leading quarterback? <laughs> yeah. How okay. dare you? They're going to host how a dare playoff you? game, Mike, because uh, of Carson Wentz and how great he's been. He's got he's on pace for 24 touchdowns. Thank you, Jason. And 24 interceptions. Oop. Is that true? Yes. He is <laughs> one-to-one pa- oh, ratio. He's on the pick six plan? Yeah, he's on the oh pick six gosh. plan. Still not good enough for fantasy. How many days does it take uh, once you start the plan to fully accomplish – it took Jameis Winston years of of practice. <laughs> okay, so you can you can uh, actually was his first play in the NFL, I believe, was a turnover. It was a pick six. <laughs> it legitimately was a yeah, pick six. That's right. It was Mariota versus Jameis Winston. I remember that game. That I mean, how funny that was his first play. Things well, he come. put the plan into action yeah. immediately. Yeah, this and is not something you wait on. You go to town. The good news with Carson Wentz is they're going into their bye week. <laughs> They're going to come out healthy. They're going to look oh, great. No. And I'm sure that in week 10, oh, the matchup is great. Stream of the, the week. Giants. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know it. You just build them up. Honestly, you didn't say anything false. That is 100% going to be the narrative. <laughs> he's going to come out. He's going to suck. <laughs> come on, Carson. Josh Allen, uh, this was weathery. Weathery, yeah. I it, really not a not a good game for fantasy, but not anything, you know. Like unexpected. I said, in, in our league uh, scoring format, he had fourteen points. That is his worst game of the season. It would be super disappointing this week with all. We haven't really touched. Uh, you know, we we talked about the weather prior to the weekend, but it came true. Some yeah. of these games were cra- that Cleveland 
uh, Las Vegas Raiders game was insane. Yes. You watched the different, I mean, it had every weather event that it you could like have. It looked like when you go to the science museum and they have that little, the weather panel. Yes. And they just, they take you through all extreme forces of nature. They that were was doing, that game. They were doing some U United States Postal Service training in the corner yes, of, the, were. of the stadium. There was, was a kick that <laughs> would just, it got it got blocked midair. It was halfway to the goalpost, and then someone he kicked came a boomerang. And just said no. Yeah, there was Matumbo, a wizard in Matumbo the stand. Yes. There was a wizard in the stand with a wand, and he's just like, "You're going, you're going over there." All right, golf was uh, hideous, <laughs> terrible. Yeah, uh, not good. He 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 melts under pressure. He is. Uh, oh, but also bet for Josh Allen. Uh, play him next week. Yes. yes, against Seattle. Although I, it is four consecutive weeks where Josh Allen has not been the quarterback that you hoped for, mm -hmm. so it's I know that's hard, and that's I think why Mike said that because yes. just play him. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was uh, was worse than than anybody, and I don't think he was gonna I, like. I'm he not wasn't gonna, turning it around. No, he was not going to turn it around in the fourth quarter. No. He should have been able to, like Nick Mullins did, but he was not going to. Yeah, so you could have pivoted off of Josh Allen towards Jimmy G, or you could have pivoted towards. Carson Wentz and you wouldn't have been yeah. wouldn't have been thrilled. Um running backs. All right, let's let's have another difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. Clyde Edwards Alaire, six for twenty one, three targets. When you look at the snap count in the backfield, I believe thirty three snaps for Clyde Edwards Alaire, seventeen for Le'Veon Bell. And eight for Daryl Williams and seven for Darwin Thompson. It's I I don't want to just be a Clyde Edwards Alaire apologist. It, this is bad. I mean, if you played him, it he may have helped contribute to you losing this weekend. But it's another game of can you really take anything from this? They it was a beat down from the the moment the game started against the New York Jets. You saw a lot of like I said, Daryl Williams and Darwin Thompson combined for fifteen uh, snaps. They combined for eight touches. Like what do you? You can you can I, take I, something from it though. Yeah. A yeah, lot. because there's if you have multiple games over the course of the year that you're trying not to take anything from, that's what you take from it. The possibility of winning the football game without your running backs exists every single week for this team, and because of that, you have can you make the transition in your head that Clyde Edwards-Helaire is David Montgomery? That's and, what you have to do. And and and, and in in a, in a sense, look, if the team is winning big, that should be good for the running back. Yeah, it uh, should. Th this isn't this isn't a situation where. He was averaging north of 20 opportunities a game prior to the last two weeks when Lev showed up mm -hmm. and whatever opponents and things and game scripts happened, he is averaging 10 opportunities a game right now the last two weeks. If you're telling me he touches the ball 10 times, I'm going to say, well, it's good offense. He's got a chance, but he's not going to be an RB1. He's not going to be a top 15 running back for me. He's he's a Still running a back. top 24 or... Yeah, I mean, he's around there. He is, I mean, when you're talking about David Montgomery, it's like, would you rather have the better offense, fewer touches, or a ton of known touches in a bad offense? I, I think at the end of the day, they're going to end up near each other. Lev Bell did not get his revenge well, no. against but this team. The irony is... Six for seven on the ground. I think on Friday I said, I don't look at these two players any differently for the game. I didn't know I was prescribing five fantasy points each. That's what <laughs> they did. I mean, they... Yeah. They just didn't need him. And um, even late in the game, if it's out of hand, it's Darrell Williams, it's Darwin. It's Henny in the game and uh, adjusted adjusted perspective. So, so what team gives up a, a an absolute ton of rushing touchdowns? Carolina. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's the matchup next week. So, so six touchdowns for Patrick ev Mahomes. Everyone wants – everyone's going to want to know what to do with Clyde Edwards-Alaire next week. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask the question about Montgomery. Who would you rather have rest of season? Oh, my goodness. Because you, you have the opportunity problem for Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Here's the opportunities for David Montgomery. 18, 24, 19, 26 yesterday. David Montgomery has been a top 24 running back four consecutive weeks. But never been a running back one in that same stretch. Correct. He's a running back two every single week. So he's not a guy helping you win your matchup. He's a guy helping you not lose your matchup, which is it's an important thing. You you want those 10 to 15 fantasy points. Uh, but, you know, I, I do think that Clyde Edwards-Alaire 
at least has the opportunity, the option, the games that will help you win. If mm-hmm. I had to pick one of those two, I would I would still stick with Clyde Edwards Alaire. But I think it's a I think that's a trade that if you are on the other side, you can go make in your league. If you offer it, you're probably going to be able to get get that trade put through. Yeah, and you, you gotta wonder what Lev and further integrating Lev, do you believe they'll try to do that? You know, that's another question because he's sure. only been there for two weeks. So uh whew, David so David Montgomery, I mean, we are at the time of this of the season where we really do need to start looking at schedule. Tennessee Okay, whatever, but Minnesota, Green Bay, Detroit, Houston, Minnesota, Jacksonville. It's a nice finish. Like that David is. Montgomery is set up for success, uh, assuming that they can get some competent quarterback play. Yeah, he um, he's just getting so – there's nobody else. On, there's just nobody else. And on the flip side, Clyde Edwards-Alaire has matchups against Tampa Bay, the Denver Broncos, and the Saints that all project to be difficult matchups mm. the rest of the way. Interesting. What, who would you rather have rest of season, Andy? I would rather have David Montgomery, and I don't like saying that, but it's true. Yeah. Sometimes you need a somebody to just give you ten to fifteen points every week and not destroy you. Yeah. If so, if if you're gonna try and be actionable on this, I would. If you're gonna try and go off for Clyde for David Montgomery, I'm I'm I think I'm with Andy. <laughs> as crazy as this world is. Uh, try and get something more than just Montgomery. I, I I agree. Try to get try to get more, but I have you have swayed me. I think based on the matchup and look at the last. I mean, I'm looking at the last month. The last month, David Montgomery, he's been consistent. hasn't had those big games. Uh, Clyde edwards alaire in that stretch of the last month was a top five running back once. Total points over the last four weeks. David Montgomery has more. Than Clyde edwards alaire and you look forward and you say, "Well, now Lev is included. The matchups are worse." Yeah, I, I would take David Montgomery. And what hurts the most is the Clyde targets. I mean, target wise, yeah. David Montgomery five or more targets for five straight weeks. Yep. If you know you're going to get that, that's helpful. I'm going to make it more painful. Jonathan Taylor or David Montgomery. <laughs> I mean, Jonathan Taylor is just pain right now. He did get a goal line carry at the end, which is ironic because the way it feels right now is just torture, right? But if he gets in on that carry, the next carry went to Wilkins, and he got in. Him and Wilkins end up fantasy-wise basically the same if he gets in on that carry. So I just want to know how much you do. We want to appropriately react as fantasy players. We have to make an adjustment about Clyde. We have to make an adjustment on Jonathan Taylor in this. You know, you thought when Mac went down you were going to get this superstar. He is not a, easy. They're not a fit for the offense. He's not having big plays. Or he's banged up. We don't know how severe it is. I don't know how to adjust my opinion on Jonathan Taylor. But let me ask you, do you just plain get out right now with Baltimore, Tennessee, Green Bay on the schedule? If you can, if you can if you can convert the big name and the hope and the opportunity into another player that is good, like, uh, you know, David Montgomery is probably a sideways trade, but I think safe. Jonathan Taylor or uh, Chris Carson? Chris Carson. Okay. Even even though he's injured, and I'm looking at some other options here, and I, I figure we're only bringing up David Montgomery because it's because of the fact that we don't like David Montgomery, and he's every week. He's well, he's just not fun plotter. to like. Yeah, exactly. But are there other backs that are maybe better that you could trade Clyde edwards alaire or Jonathan Taylor for? Look, David Johnson, right? David Johnson has been a top twelve back the last two weeks before the bye. Now he's now he's past the bye. Would you rather have David Johnson? I think I would. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. The, let me ask you another one. Okay. Would you rather have Chase Edmonds? No. I. I mean, I. I know we we don't know, and and we have different um, whether it's hopes or outlooks. I still believe when Kenyon Drake comes back, right or wrong, he's gonna inherit his job. Well, what, he's gonna get his job back. I and you might be very very right about that. But let's say you give Edmonds two weeks of top five potential. What is that worth your, to your fantasy team? I mean, how do you evaluate a few weeks of burst play versus I would a not, bunch of weeks of 10 points? I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't make that trade for Edmonds. Okay. Yeah, I, and I totally get that. I mean, it makes sense. We don't know whether Drake is back in a week. I mean, but it's going to be a really good week if Edmonds is alone. Yeah. Maybe you think you could tr- – would you go for Miles Sanders? He's uh, going into the bye, so he'll miss the week. Interesting. But when he comes out, he's – You're saying nobody's going to do that deal. Nobody's going to trade Miles Sanders away for Clyde. Well, it, because Miles Sanders is is it's, on bye. Yeah, I don't think 
I don't think they do it. If I if I could do it, I would do it in a heartbeat. Because I know when Miles is out there, he's a game changer for my fantasy team. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, real quick, I'm going to blitz these down running backs this week. You tell me if the panic alarm is is worthwhile. Melvin Gordon. Yeah, with I'm, how well Philip Lindsay is playing yet again. Yeah, I'm. I I don't believe it's good. It's going to be good uh, rest of way for Melvin Gordon. Lindsay's great. Uh, Kareem Hunt. Are you worried about Kareem Hunt? The bye week. Nick Chubb coming back possibly, and Hunt has been worse with no Chubb. Well, then it should be good news that Chubb is coming back. Yeah, I'm. I'm not worried about Kareem Hunt. I I'm would love either. to trade for Kareem Hunt. Yep. Uh, the big role for DeAndre Swift has turned into six carries for one yard, three targets for 22 yards, and then uh, Carry On Johnson had 18 percent of snaps. At the end of the day, this is the Lions' backfield. Stay away. Mm-hmm. Josh Kelly. Good night. Sleep tight. Yeah. Farewell. Yep. Let I'll Bell. To sleep. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, so the, w- when you were saying, like, would you trade Clyde for Chase Edmonds, get a couple big weeks, Lev Bell was six for seven on the ground. He did have a – he was three for 31 through the air, had a fumble. Uh, but I'm just – in the realm of possibilities, because you're still trying to allow for things to take shape, Carolina, w- let's say Clyde has a great game. Levy and Bell shows that he's still is eh, – yeah, the head of the bye week. People, people were terrified of LaShawn McCoy last year. He came, and Shady got a lot of work right at the beginning of the year, and then the team figured out, no, our, we're, we're much better if we don't give the ball to LaShawn McCoy. We, in fact, make him inactive. Levy, just because they signed Le'Veon Bell does not guarantee that Le'Veon Bell has the juice that they want. We still haven't seen that yeah, I think, play out. I think you, you're going to want to pay attention next week and just see how he performs against Carolina, what the snap percentage yeah. will be. I he, love this. He could note. be great. I'm just saying that you gotta, you you gotta be prepared that other things that you're not planning for could happen. Sure. Breaking news. All right, this comes in from our injury expert Matthew Betts. Uh, Cooper Cup is a name to watch today. Fell on his wrist yesterday, he did. and there is concern for a potential fracture. Oof. A so there is going to be an fracture. MRI in the next day or two. Uh-oh. So. Uh-oh. Pay attention. All right. Uh, let's. Do you try to trade for Robert Woods? Um, I. I mean, it's hard to. I, I mean, it's more like a game. probably a waiver alert for Reynolds or Jefferson. Sure. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Amari Cooper one for five. Adam Thielen three for twenty-seven. The weather was real bad in Green Bay. I'm I'm not worried about Thielen or Jefferson. I moved them both down in the rankings that morning due to the weather. You guys agree with that? One hundred percent. And and also Dalvin Cook said you don't get to throw the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyler Lockett, uh, four for thirty-three. It's just the way it goes. Yep. What are you doing with Amari Cooper though? You you glossed over it, but uh, I mean, obviously it's not going to be Benanucci forever. He'll get Dalton back. Cooper's just the one I want I, to have, but maybe not this week, and then not in the buy. So maybe try to get rid of him. Yeah, I mean, you got two weeks where you you can't play Amari Cooper in my estimation. So if I could trade him, I would. Deontay Johnson exited with a hamstring injury, came back in the game. He was only one for six in this one. Right. Dallas next week, you probably just Deontay. We we have supported you over and over and over and over, my man. I think you're great. I think you are a tremendous wide receiver. Uh, change. I don't know. Change your diet. It's some, <laughs> something's got to be fixed here. We got to keep you on the field. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to sit him against Dallas next week. I think if he's on the field, you're probably just playing him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you're just um, you're you're saying some prayers for for his hamstrings and his groin and his and we'll, calf and his. We'll see you here for this discussion next week. Uh, all right, um, Nelson Aguilar. This game turned sour with the weather as well. Uh, this is breaking news. Jason Moore, wide receiver for the Chargers, had no targets. Oh, oh man, Jason. next week. Next week, yeah. oh, oh, let me get that TD. Jar- Jarvis Landry had 11 targets, just four catches in this game. A couple drops again. He's been dealing with the drop skis. Well, he's got a broken rib. But that was a bad weather game, too. I was going to say, I-, I remember some of those targets that were just horrible, and you could see the ball moving in the air. I'm not worried about that. The 11 targets is the focus here. He is going to be very good. Uh, Yeah, I think Higgins was goosed in that game after the 11 targets the week before. Tight end stinkers. Are you worried? Mark Andrews. It, it, he is very boomer bust yet again. It's, it's Lamar, Lamar Jackson, man. Lamar Jackson stinks. He's not playing well. 
I mean, he's fine for fantasy because when you run, you get more fantasy points. But mm -hmm. when you watch him throw the ball, he stinks. I'm worried, worried about Hollywood. I'm worried about Mark Andrews. Uh, if you're a pass catcher, there's not – I mean, it's the exact opposite. You get this little itty bitty pie. Yeah. You get this little tiny single serving – you know, you get a delicious hostess apple pie. I love them, but I'm not sharing them with 12 of my closest friends. That's one bite. <laughs> no, you're not. That's what I feel like is happening He's right now. He's not sharing it with one of his closest no. friends. No. <laughs> I need a full Mark Andrews – you know, I get that whole thing. You need all the targets to go to one person. Yes. Darren Waller, uh, weather game. Don't yes. worry about it. Johnu Smith, though, this is um, yeah. I mean, he's he's not been good for a while. No, the the emergence of Corey Davis, there's, it's very disappointing of, of what we saw at the beginning of the season from Johnu, but now it's fading and, and away. It's the targets yeah. two, four, two, yeah, and that was after seven, five, eight, seven. So, uh, yeah, the the targets say you got to look elsewhere. Dallas Goddard, one target. It was insane, man. He was on the field. Over 80% of the snaps, one target. What are you doing, Wentz? 100% catch rate, 16 Ooh, yards. Took it to 100. Yeah. Nice. The Drew sample size? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, it wasn't like uh, Richard Rodgers was bringing him in because he had zero targets. Yeah. Richard Rodgers, uh, farewell? Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as Goddard was activated, it was you had to abandon. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and also you had to abandon Goddard. That's what you didn't know, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other important tight end situations. I mean, Higby came back four targets, two for 14 Everett, five for 32. You're in that boat every week with the Rams. It, it, it could be a situation with but the injury to cup. That's what I want to say. But then you got to pick, you still got to pick one. You still got to pick between Everett and Higby. Nobody wants to do that. You want to know who your guy is. Yeah. Who is it, Mike? Who's the guy? Gerald. Yeah. <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> It's Gerald. That's his name. <laughs> I know. I know. I know it's his name. It's a funny name. We the, get it. <laughs> Gerald. We get it, Gerald. <laughs> why, why are we doing that to I him? don't know. There's no <laughs> reason. <laughs> what, Tyler. What go G. G. Everett. Well, now you're taking his name away from him? That's not oh, nice. I'm Gerald. still deserves a Gerald, name, even if it's Gerald. Jerry. Larry. Uh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry? It's, it's a Parks and Rec oh, reference. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. A signed Todd Gurley jersey sold for $76 yesterday. There are hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions each and every day at pristineauction.com. Use code BALLERS and get a $10 credit. That is it. Waivers tomorrow. Ooh. Enjoy the game tonight. Hopefully it's who better you, than last Who do you night. got? Who do you got in this one? Uh, I think I'll take Tampa. Yeah, me too. All right. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, WGU. Sponsored today's show, and they offer a quality degree program that's affordable, flexible, and uh, makes it possible to graduate even faster. On your own schedule, under $8,700 per year, fees included, a low flat rate tuition, as many courses as you want each term. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasyfootballers.